tech prices? Should you get one? Do they really work? How much do they reduce neck injuries? And which particular injuries? There are no black and white answers, but this video might help you to decide. The age-old question, of course, with any protective gear, how much of it do you want to wear? So first you need to look at your type of riding, skill level, how often you like to run into trees or hit the ground, and at what speed. With neck braces, it looks as though speed could be a big factor. Neck braces are way more common in desert racing and motocross compared to enduro riding. One study showed 10% of injuries in motocross are neck and upper spine fractures. Whereas a study of enduro racers found no spinal fractures at all, just mild strains, which only accounted for 5% of total injuries. Now, that's actual enduro racers, so us Muppets, us slower everyday riders, will probably have even less spinal injuries. So, do neck braces actually work? First, we are only talking about neck braces, not these flimsy neck collars. They might keep the sun off your neck, but they will do little else according to the research. Second, we won't rely on anecdotal evidence. For example, a guy lands head first into a wolf and says, without my neck brace, I'd be dead or paralyzed. Unfortunately, anecdotal evidence is extremely unreliable. We'll try to rely more on solid research. First up, this informal report from basic statistics gathered by emergency services personnel. This makes the most positive claims for neck braces based on a lot of accidents. Unfortunately, the methodology isn't good from a research angle. Personally, I think it needs analysis and interpretations from experts to be considered reliable. Second, a white paper from Liat creator of the first motorbike-specific neck brace. Methodology is much better in this study, but of course, <laughs> it's by Liat. There's the potential for so much bias here. Not surprisingly, the report found Liat neck braces do work in preventing or reducing injury. Look, it would be good to see this paper published in a peer-reviewed journal. It would give it the stamp of approval from independent resources but no luck there so far. It's also very interesting to note that Chervis did a study on neck braces but never released it. Hmm, I wonder why. Next, this properly independent study said the results were unclear and they felt the test crash dummy being used in all tests so far needs to be replaced with a better model to really prove whether neck braces work or not. Another independent study showed neck braces had a moderate effect, but only if the gap between the helmet and the neck brace was less than five centimeters. And finally, this French study it tested the Liet and EVS neck braces along with one of those useless foam collars. It found no significant effect with all three, but they did note they only tested at one specific impact and one angle of orientation, and more research would be needed. They also commented that the gap between the helmet and neck brace could be an important consideration. So that's some of the research. Confused? <laughs> I am. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of money available for high quality research with big sample groups and high tech crash test dummies. So let's look at the pros and cons. I'll go out on a limb here and say there is probably limited evidence for neck braces working, at least if your helmet is within five centimeters of the brace and your helmet works well with your neck brace and existing body armor. And anecdotal evidence suggests the faster you ride, the more likely you are to have a neck injury. So what are the drawbacks? 
Some riders hate the restricted movement, others don't notice it after the first hour. Some riders say they simply find neck braces too uncomfortable, others say they barely notice it. If you ride in hot weather, you will probably notice a bit less airflow. And of course, there is the extra weight. Do neck braces break collarbones? Well, there's no hard evidence for this as yet, but if it's because of a transfer of the impact, <laughs> I'd go for a broken collarbone than a broken neck any day. There are online discussions about neck braces causing other types of injuries, but there just doesn't seem to be any evidence to back up these claims. So there you have it guys, should you get a neck brace? <laughs> well, it's all clear as mud. With a bit of luck, we might see some decent independent research with high-tech crash test dummies, great methodology, and all specifically applied to various types of dirt riding. But don't hold your breath. In the meantime, do your own research, see if it's worth handing over your hard-earned cash. And remember to check out our other protective gear vids too.